Really? I'll tell you, the last two mornings have been beautiful mornings, haven't they? Right. Yeah. Good. After soaking that sunshine up. Praise God. Amen. Every day is not a dreary cold day, is it? Right. You have some of those. But not every day is, thankfully. Praise God. We could live at the north or south pole. Wouldn't that be terrible? Right. I wouldn't want to live there, would you? Nope. Amen. We have just enough of it to help us be thankful for what we got today. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Well, we're going to get started in the Word of the Lord this morning. And uh, we need to remember all of those uh, that are unable to be here today. Sister Cooper, Sister Krennic, uh, and any others that just cannot make it out. We need to keep them lifted up to the Lord. Uh, many of them want to be here. They just simply physically are unable to, to do it. And so we don't want to forget about them. Amen. In fact, I would encourage you to put into practice praying and calling people's names out daily that are a part of this body. Amen. I do endeavor to pray and call y'all's names out every day. To the Lord, and uh, you know, if the church, everybody would do that. You'd have a pretty good number of people praying for you. Amen. Praise yes. God. Yes. Between that and Jesus praying for you, because you're a believer, He did pray for you. You know, if you believe in Him through what the apostles taught, He prayed for you. And I Amen. You can make it, don't you? Yes. Amen. All right, today we're going to look into the book of Judges today. And I kind of felt like this is the direction the Lord wanted me to take today. I'm going to need a little grace from the Lord to help make sense of this. But praise God, we're going to look at Judges chapter 1. We'll read four verses there, verses 1 through 4. It says, Now after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first? Everybody say first. first. Who, will, who should go first to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah. Everybody say Judah. Judah. Judah shall go up. Behold, I have, I have delivered the land into his hand. And Judah said unto Simeon, his brother, Come up with me into my lot, that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I likewise will go with thee into thy lot. So Simeon went with him. Everybody say, Judah wants Simeon going. Judah wants Simeon going. <laughs> And Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand. And they slew of them in Bezak 10,000 men. Amen. Jeremiah, lead us in a word of prayer, would you? Praise Thank God. you so much for this day that you've given us this opportunity to gather here this Thank morning. Thank you, Lord. Prove that for a number of years. I'm glad 
that Jesus is a part of my life. Amen. And I want him to be the first part. Praise God. That's what I try to do. Hope you do too. I want to look at these scriptures, a few of them here. And uh, verse 1 said, Now after the death of Joshua, praise God, the book of Judges follows the book of Joshua. Amen? Praise God. And uh, Joshua has died here, but it says, uh, if you look back, uh, we mentioned this fairly often. Praise God. About coming out of Egypt. It was Moses that brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. Amen. And they were headed to the promised land, weren't they? Amen. They were on their way to the promised land. And, and as has been mentioned uh, in the last couple of months, I think a couple of times I've heard it mentioned, uh, the promised land, heaven is not a type of the promised land. Though we sing about that, crossing over Chile, Jordan, you know, into heaven, the true type, I believe, that the scripture uh, gives us is that the promised land is something that <clears throat> believers actually enter into today. And it's not a, necessarily a physical land. It is a kingdom, the kingdom of God. Amen? Yes. Moses brought the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage, but Moses himself never went into the promised land. And uh, he made some mistakes, smoked the rock twice when God had told him to speak to it. Right. <clears throat> and... Uh, God said, because you did not honor me before the children of Israel, you're not going to enter into the promised land. <clears throat> but I, I see something in that, in, in that Moses was not able to go into the promised land and take the children of Israel to the promised land. We know there were several things that, uh, the reason why they didn't go in that first 40 years, I mean, the first, at, uh, the first time they went, and they had to stay behind him for 40 years. But Moses himself did not ever get to go into the promised land. The Lord took him up to Nebo, I believe it was, and he got to view it from afar off, but he never went in. But his, his uh, right-hand man, we'll call him, Joshua, is the one that took the children of Israel over into the promised land after those 40 years were up. He took them over, and I see a picture there. Uh, the reason, one thing uh, that we can see, I don't know necessarily if you would say reason, but what you can see, Moses not taking the children of Israel into the promised land. Moses represents the law, and the law was good and the holy, and, and uh, if there was a law that could give given life, uh, I mean, if there was, there would have been by the law, you know. But just like the law does, you don't get the Holy Ghost because of the law. Right. I mean, you don't enter into the kingdom of God because of the law on its own. Amen. But uh, Joshua is the one that took the children of Israel across. Joshua's name, Yahashua, uh, right. is the true pronunciation probably of it if I may not have done that very good either but that is the long form of the name Yeshua mm -hmm. and we know who Yeshua is right yes right Yeshua is is Jesus amen I right. mean that's the Hebrew for Jesus being English amen Praise God. So there's a picture there that the law did not bring us into the promises of God, but our Jesus, amen, our Joshua, our Yeshua, he brought us into the promises of God, amen? Right. Amen. And we being in the promised land, when we enter into the kingdom of God, we enter into the promised land, just like that other promised land, uh, that was 
promise to Moses and them where they entered into the physical land. Amen. There were giants. There were enemies to fight and to conquer. And so it is in the kingdom of God. Our Jesus, Yeshua, he has brought us into the, into the promised land, you might say. Amen. We've been brought into the kingdom of God. But there are adversaries. Amen. There are things that we conquer. Amen. Now, as long as they followed the Lord and did and kept the Lord first and followed uh, the instructions he gave them, they defeated their enemy. But when they picked up of the, of the uh, heathen about them, then they were conquered. Amen. There's a picture in that. Amen. Amen. We need to follow our Yeshua, Yahashua, Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. We need to follow him and be consecrated to him and dedicated to him. If we're going to conquer, you know, the inhabitants of the land. And when I say the inhabitants of the land, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. There are spiritual things that we have come into the kingdom of God that we go forth and we conquer. Right. Amen. In the book of Judges here where we picked it up, Joshua has died. Amen. And you know who's going to pick it up after he's gone. Amen. The people of God. Right. Amen. The people of God. And our, our Joshua, Yahashua, Jesus, Yeshua, our Jesus has died, amen? Right. And you know who's left in the promised land to fight the battles? It's us. Amen. We are the ones that are here. Amen. We're not here just to go through life uh, just randomly and without any sense of direction. Amen. We are here. We are the we, little kids you sing a, uh, a song. I'm in the Lord's army. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in the Lord's army. I can't remember all of it. But. Yeah. Amen. And truly, that we are, if we will get a hold of it and realize it, we are in the Lord's army. Amen. We are not here to be defeated. Right. We're not here to live defeated lives. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We're here to... Keep ourselves given unto uh, Yeshua, Jesus. Right. Amen. We're to keep ourselves given to him, faithful to him, committed to him. And following his instruction, we conquer every enemy. Right. Amen. There's not an enemy in your life that the Lord does not want you conquering. Yes. He don't want you addicted to anything. Yes. Come on. He wants you to conquer it. He don't want any sin overtaking you. He wants you to conquer it. Amen. You're going to be involved in fighting all the battles. Amen. But if you do this right, he will go before you. Amen. Right. And you will conquer. Amen. Yeah. You will subdue the enemy. Praise God. <clears throat> Amen. So this is where we find the children of Israel here. Uh you know, they're, after the death of Joshua, they're left to fight the battle and go in and take the lot of their land and con keep conquering it and keep overcoming it, you know, taking the land. And so they go and they inquire of the Lord. Now remember, Joshua physically is not there anymore. Just like our Jesus is not physically, you know, physical body with us. He died and rose again paid the price for our sin, but he's left us. Amen. And we're waiting, we're fighting these battles until he comes again. And believe me, I believe it's going to be very soon. I believe he's coming back very soon. Praise God. So they go to the Lord in prayer and they ask him, verse 1, who shall go up for us against the Canaanites, which would be the heathen, Right? He's going to go up against them first. Now, there's 12 tribes of Israel. Right. But they're inquiring, Lord, who do you want to go up first to fight against them? To take this 
lot of land. Amen. This, this area. And the Lord said unto, unto them, he said, Judah. I want Judah going at first. Amen. Out of all the 12 tribes. It's Judah that the Lord wanted to head out first. And, you know, in Bible days, uh, for the most part, whenever they named their kids, their, their, the names that they gave their kids meant something. Amen. It, they, it implied something. Amen. Now, Judah was the one that the Lord instructed. He wanted, he wanted him to first go. And Judah, he wanted Simeon, uh, which was his actual brother, had to have the same mother and dad. Amen. He wanted him to go with him. Amen. That's important. Amen. Praise God. So their names meant something. Amen. And in looking at this, I just want to kind of uh, you know examine this just a little bit. Praise God and see what we can glean out of this. But if you look the name of Judah up in uh, the Hebrew or in Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, Strong's Exhaustive Concordance says his name means celebrated. Praise God. But if you look in uh, most uh, Hebrew dictionaries, uh, the word is defined as praise. Amen. It's to find this praise. However, in the English, the word praise is, it, it doesn't necessarily give you a full picture, uh, the name itself, a full picture of what uh, the word, the name Judah actually means. You know, I mean, not when you look at it in the, through the view, through the lens of English words. Amen. But if you look at it through the word, through the Hebrew word, it has a little more uh, depth to it. Amen. Things that you can glean from what the Lord was wanting uh, to happen. Amen. Right. Whenever he wanted Judah to go first. Amen. Praise God. The uh, parent word, the parent root word uh, that is used. For the word uh, Judah is is uh, Yad. Y A D is the best that uh, I mean. I, I suppose that's how it's worded. Yad. Good. Is that correct, brother? Theme? He's into that. Praise God. Yad. And and that word, that root word, means hand. Yes. Hold your hand up. That's right. Amen. That's what the parent word of of. Uh, this word, in fact, the name uh, Judah, if I'm saying it right, is Yahuda. Did I say it right? Yahuda. 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 Okay. But the root part of that word, good morning, everybody. Good to have you all come in. The, the root part of that word, uh, it comes from a word with the, uh, the meaning of hand. And there's several child root words that are derived from the parent word and uh, having the, the, it has the meaning of throw. Yeah. The, the, the uh, parent word represents hand. I mean, is, uh, has the implication of hand and the child root word, the words uh, express throwing. Amen? Praise God. And uh, one of the child root words that has to do with what we're talking about is yada. Amen. The root, that is the root of Jehuda. Did I say it right, Brother Damon? You might have straightened me out on that one. All child root words formed from one parent word are directly related in meaning to the parent word. So that word is, it has a meaning connected to that very parent word, okay? It's not, it's not something off. It's something that is, uh, it, it is, whenever you say it, it's, you're, you're uh, intertwining with the parent word. The same meaning, amen? Praise God. And so, 
uh, the word Yah Yahuwah, amen, praise God, or Judah, right? right? Okay, it has the meaning of, the meaning of that word is to throw your hands out. Amen, praise God, amen. So when you just say praise, amen, praise God, in the English you may not uh, get what it is implying, amen. But when you look in the Hebrew, praise God, it speaks more of just mumbling on your breath, praise the Lord. Yeah. Absolutely. We come to church a lot of times, praise the Lord, amen. Yeah. Praise God. When we're talking about praising the Lord, scripturally, we're talking about something that's a little deeper than that, amen. Yeah. We're talking about something about yeah. throwing the hands out, amen. Yeah. amen. Praise yeah. God. So, amen. They wanted to go conquer the enemy, and God said, I won't. Judah going first. Amen. 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 If you're going to conquer the enemy, if you're going to go and take the land, amen. Amen. Judah needs to be out front. Amen. Yes, Praise God. Amen. You got enemies to fight and you got enemies to conquer. Amen. Yes, amen. Praise God. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. Remember that again, the parent word was Yod. Amen. Praise God. And the word to throw, that, that child root, is yada. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And the word yada, according to Strong's, go to the Strong's, amen, <clears throat> that very word, it means literally to use, that is, hold out the hand physically to throw a stone, an arrow, at or away, especially to reverence or worship with extended hands. Right. Yeah. That's what that word means. Amen. Praise God. Now, that's the true meaning of the Hebrew, uh, the uh, definition of what we use the word praise for. Amen. You'll find this in Genesis chapter 29, verse 35. It says, when Judah was born to Leah, she said, I will yada Yahweh. Amen. Praise God. So she's saying, actually, I will throw my hands out to Yahweh in praise. Okay? <clears throat> Let me take you to the scripture. And she conceived, Leah did, she conceived again and bare a son, and she said, now... <coughs> Will I yada? Amen. What does that mean? It means to throw the hands out. Amen. Yeah. Now will I yada? Uh, praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah. That's why she called his name Judah. Amen. Because now she is going to praise the Lord. Amen. And Judah wanted to make sure that he had his brother with him, Simeon. It says in verse 33 of Genesis 29, and she conceived, Leah did, again, and bare a son, and said, because the Lord hath heard that I was hated, he hath therefore given me this son also, and she called his name Simeon. Amen. So Judah, <clears throat> amen, wants to have Simeon go with him. Amen. It's important to have Simeon because Simeon, that represents prayers that are heard. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want to. I know that I'm going to fight battles. I know that I'm going to have a, a land to conquer, things to conquer, to overcome. Amen. And just like the Lord sent Judah, Amen, with Simeon along his side to conquer the land. And by the way, they conquered the land. Amen. God wants us to send out Judah first. Amen. Praise God. When we want God to work in our lives and do things, we need to learn to extend our hands of worship and praise. And you can be sure Simeon will be there. Amen. Simeon meaning getting those prayers answered. Amen. Amen. Am I making any sense to you? No. <laughs> praise God. Amen. It is important. Amen. That we learn to worship God. Amen. That we need to learn to worship God with more than just a 
quiet amen. I remember going to church. When I first started going to church, I went to a church that my kin folks went to. Pentecostal church. And then it was very quiet. It was very quiet. And, and in fact, my uncle was a deacon there. He's a wonderful man. I love him to pieces. My mother's brother. Amen. And uh, he had several children. They all went to that church and stuff. Amen. But you just did not hear hardly anything. Amen. Whenever church was going on. And uh, occasionally you would hear my uncle say amen. Amen. He just real quiet amen at that. But I'm telling you, what we're involved in is we need more than just a quiet amen. Amen? Yes. Praise. I said we need more than just to come and uh, warm pews. Amen? We need to worship God. We need to reach out to God. Amen? If we're going to do it the biblical way, praise God, scripturally, we need to lift up our hands, amen, and worship, reach out to God. Amen? A good example of what this word means Amen. I know that I'm not much into football or anything like that. I'm not into it at all, really. But I used to be, before I turned to the Lord and lived for the Lord, I used to get, I used to love to watch. Back in my days, it was a very long time ago. Uh, you know, I've been in church since 1979, and I've not involved myself in that. I haven't had a TV since I got in church. But uh, I used to watch the Dallas Cowboys. I was a big fan of the Dallas Cowboys. Roger the Dodger, you know. We don't know who Roger the Dodger is. Sure. Uh, Roger, uh, what's his last name? Roger uh, Staubach. Staubach, that's it. That Tom Landry was a coach, I believe. And he was, they were real popular people. Amen. Praise God. Uh, and every once in a while, I do have a computer, and every once in a while I run across something on there, and you'll see uh, uh, something happening on, on the football. I think that a particular incident. I just, I've seen it before, just running through that computer stuff. And uh, somebody that they are really admiring gets the ball and runs the field, and nobody can catch him, and he's running. And the crowd is on their feet. Amen? Praise God. And you know what? Listen to me. Their hands are up. Yes. Their hands are up. Their voices are loud. They are crying. They are yawning. I don't know if I said that word. Right. Yada. They are doing that very thing. They are throwing the hands up. And not only do they do that, but whenever he makes it across that goal line, some of them is even bouncing on their toes. Amen? Yes. You know what they are doing? They're doing to a worldly thing what Christians ought to be doing. Amen. To this God that we serve. Amen. Amen. That's, what the, that's, what the, that's what the Lord is wanting. They're wanting to go and conquer the promised land. And God said, I want Judah going first. And you know what? We don't win a lot of battles sometimes because maybe we don't send Judah first. Amen. Am I making any sense? Amen. Yes. Praise. Am I making any sense to you? Amen. If we want to win the battles, if we want to subdue the enemy, we need to learn, amen, to worship the Lord. Amen. To yes. praise the Lord. Amen. amen. Not quietly. <coughs> amen. Well, I'm just trying to share with you what I feel like the Lord, amen, laid upon my heart this morning. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. And if we will let Judah, if you'll hear what I'm saying this morning, if we will let Judah go first, amen, if we will have that relationship with the Lord, amen, praise God, amen, if we will let that throwing out of the hands and the worship, I'm talking about something real and sincere, amen, from the depth of our heart. We would be surprised how many enemies would be conquered in our lives. Amen? Yeah. Amen. I want to put the enemy under my feet. You know, the enemy doesn't belong on top of you. He belongs under your feet. Amen? Amen. He belongs under your feet. Praise God. Amen. 
Thank you, Lord. In, in Psalm 76 and verse number one, praise God. Y'all understand what I'm talking about this morning? Huh? Praise God. I'm not just talking about just saying praise the Lord. I'm talking about something radical. Come on, I'm talking about something. Amen. Again, back to that ball game. Nobody had to tell them to do that. Nobody had, they didn't really, they had cheerleaders on those football fields, but, but nobody really has to even have a cheerleader whenever the, the person that they admire is making a touchdown. Amen? Come on, whenever he's, whenever he's running the winning, uh, you know, game. Amen? Whenever he's running that play that is winning, causing them to go out ahead of the enemy. Amen? They are on their feet. Their hands are lifted, and they are excited. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And they do it for a worldly thing. But I'm here to tell you that that, that is the very meaning of the name of Judah. Amen? Praise God. And uh, amen. Leah named him that. Named him that very name. Because you know what? That name had a meaning. Amen? That's how she felt. Amen. Towards the Lord, forgiving her this child. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Psalm 76 and verse number one, it says, In Judah is God known. In Judah is God known. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. You know what? <clears throat> now, I know God can move in a whole lot of ways. But I have noticed over the years when people get after it in sincerity with their hearts, amen, whenever they are fervent in their spirit and their worship, amen, I have noticed that the presence of God comes mightily on the scene, amen. I know there's occasions whenever things are quiet and God moves and, and uh, I've had you know, the Lord move and touch my life whenever I, I didn't even expect him to. Just out walking or something. And then all of a sudden you feel the presence of God. Amen? Amen. It's just, just kindness. It's, it's goodness. And he is so wonderful. But I'm here to tell you, I have felt his presence a whole lot more whenever I am worshiping him. Amen. 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 Lifting up my voice to him Amen. and praising him. Amen. Amen. In Judah is God known. Now, I know and I believe that this is a reflection to the scripture here of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. According to Revelation 5, 5, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. <laughs> it doesn't say, uh, you know, it says Jesus is the lion in King of Jerusalem. <laughs> Isn't the lion supposed to be the king of the jungle? Yes. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords, isn't he? But he's the lion. There's 12 tribes of Israel. And, and I know, you can look at Hebrews. He, Hebrews uh, uh, 7 and 14 says, Our Lord sprang out of Judah. Amen. Praise God. And, and it talks about Judah again in Genesis 49 and 10 as a in genealogy type stuff. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh, a reference to Jesus. Until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. That's Jesus, amen? amen. Shiloh is a reference to Jesus, too, amen? Yes. Praise God. But Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords, isn't he? Amen. Come on. But what tribe is he mentioned that being? I know he came out of the tribe of Judah. But listen to me. Praise God. Look at it in the context of the name Judah. What is it representing? Of throwing the hands out, of worshiping. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah, of those fervent worshipers. Amen. Praise God. I don't want to be a fervent worshiper. I don't want to be in the tribe. He's the lion of, don't you? Amen. Come on. Praise God. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It is important. I'm preaching this today or teaching today about the uh, power 
of praising the Lord. And I'm not talking about just under your breath, praise the Lord. You know, that little quiet praise the Lord. But I'm talking about being expressive to the Lord. Amen? Thrusting the hand up. That's what that word name actually means. Praise God. When you're in a battle, Judah needs to be led, needs to lead the way. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Another uh, place uh, referencing Jehoshaphat. Listen to this right here in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 13. Amen. Amen. We're going to read a few verses here. You might want to turn there. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 13. They had a big bunch of people coming against them, a multitude of people coming against them. It says, and all Judah, there's Judah again, isn't it? And all Judah stood before the Lord, amen, with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Oh, praise God, don't leave your children behind. Don't leave your wife behind. If we can get all the family on board with this worshiping the Lord, lifting up your hands in the sanctuary, and blessing the Lord, right? If we can get everybody, don't leave your children behind, amen. Can I tell you that you're probably... Your children probably won't be praisers if you're not a praiser. Amen. Lead the way, Dad. Amen. Lead the way, Mom. Amen. Be praisers. Lift up your hands and worship Him. Amen. And praise Him. But all Judah, amen, stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, uh, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, I'm going to go now through there. Levi, the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. He said, Hearken ye, all Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou, Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow go you down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz. And you shall find him by the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. <clears throat> you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the, of the Lord with you. And Judah, and there's Judah, and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Amen? Praise God. I'm telling you something. They fell before the Lord, worshiping him. And the Levites and the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korhites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice. Amen? With a loud, with a voice, a loud voice on high. Amen? Amen. Praise God. It doesn't sound like a quiet church service to me, does it, you? Praise God. They're standing up uh, to worship, to praise the Lord of Israel with a loud voice on high. Amen. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Jew, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you as be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. I want you to catch this next verse. And when he had consulted with the people, when he, he talked to them, didn't he? He consulted with the people. What did he do? He's fixing to go back. He's fixing to go into a war. Amen? The other people's got all kinds of stuff. They're coming against them with swords and spears and arrows and all this kind of stuff. And what's he doing? He appointed singers unto the Lord. Amen? And, and that that sh should praise the beauty of holiness. Amen. As they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Listen to this right here. This is, this is important. There's two places here where praise is mentioned here. I, again, I told you sometimes when you read the English phrase, you know, the depth of what it's saying, you don't grasp until you look at the original Hebrew. Amen. This first praise is different from the second one. That Yeah, they both mean praise, but the first one is to make, to be boastful, to be clamorous, foolish, <coughs> rave, celebrate. So what he's talking about, he's not just talking about 
just, you know, just hum a little tune or something. <laughs> He's talking about raving. You know what raving is? You know, you know what celebrating is? Amen. We're talking about being rambunctious with the worship. Amen. That's what they're doing. That's their, and you know what they're doing it about? They're doing it about, they're praising, they're, being, they're raving, they're being in the eyes of other people even foolish. Amen. Come on, they're clamorously. Amen. They're boastfully. Amen. They're praising the Lord and they're praising him. Listen to me. These are not worldly people. These are not these worldly Pentecostal people. Amen. These are holiness people, Pentecostal people. They're zealous about godliness. Amen. They're zealous about a zeal towards God, towards holiness and righteousness. Amen. They're boastful about it. They're lifting the Lord up. Amen. Praise God. The second one is the one we've been talking about is Yara, means to hold the hands up. So here you've got a group of people, and they're they're holding those hands up. They're Yara, right? They're lifting up the Lord's name. They're worshiping him. They're praising the beauty of holiness. Amen. Oh, come on. Somewhere along the line, we got to get past this being afraid that we're going to hear something that's going to straighten our lives out. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. The way we know the love, if we love God or not, listen to me, is that if we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous, I want to serve the Lord. I want to live like God wants me to live. Amen. I want it so much when I start hearing about it being preached, you might see me running the aisles. Amen. You will probably see my hands up in the air worshiping the one that I'm living for. Amen. Amen. Because I'm zealous about it. Amen. These folks were zealous about it. And you know what happened whenever they went out before uh, the, they went out before the army. They went out before the military. And you know what? They were singing. They appointed singers and they were singing and praising. And verse 22 says, And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the children of Ammon, Moab, and the Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. They did not even lift a bow up. They did not lift up a sword. And then all they did, they, were, they obeyed God. And they went out and they started lifting up their hands and they started singing and they started worshiping the Lord. Amen. Because God was sending Judah out before them, right? Come on. Amen. And you know what? God did the rest. Too often we don't do that. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Too often we don't do that. We get, we're having trouble we're having trials and we come to church and we're down, or you know, we just we want to find a place to pray, and that's all has its place. But I'm here to tell you, God wants you to be victorious over the enemy. God wants you to defeat the enemy. And if you're going through things, the way out of your situation is by worship. Yeah. Worship. Amen. Amen. Zealous, fervent worship, lifting God up. Amen. Even when you don't feel like it. Yeah. Amen. The Lord tells us to offer up sacrifices. But we don't offer up sacrifices of bullets and lambs. We offer up the sacrifice of praise. Amen. In his yeah. name. Amen. And a sacrifice is not a sacrifice unless it's a sacrifice. Amen. Amen. So when you don't feel like praising him, praise him. Amen. Yeah. When you don't feel like lifting up the name of Jesus, lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jehoshaphat, Judah's enemies were conquered simply by worship in God. Amen. Praise God. Reminds me of Acts 16, 25. Paul and Silas were beaten past to the prison. We know the story. Amen. Praise God. They were hurting. They were in the depths of the dungeon, and they were bound with chains. But the Bible says, and at midnight, Midnight depicting the darkest hour of their situation, right? Come on, you may be in your darkest hour of your situation. You probably don't feel like praising the Lord. You probably don't feel like lifting up. You probably don't feel like having a church service. Maybe you're struggling with these viruses and stuff. Maybe you're struggling with finances or things that's happening, our crippled economy and all this kind of stuff. Amen. You may not feel like, you may not feel jubilant. But sometimes you got to go off what you know, amen, and not what you feel. If you walk by your feelings, 
you don't stay down sometimes, but you know it's the right thing to do. Amen. Praise is common, the Bible says. Praise is the right thing to do. Amen. According to the scripture. And you lift up your hands in the sanctuary. Amen. Despite how you feel. And you worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. Not because you have all the answers, but you know the one that does have all the answers. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. And at midnight, Paul and Silas, after being beaten and put into a rat-infested dungeon. Amen. Chained and bound. They began to pray and to sing praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. They weren't quiet about it. Do <laughs> yeah, you know everybody else was hearing them? Yeah. They were lifting up their voice in the midst of their trouble. And we know the rest of the story. The Lord sent an earthquake and shook the place. And not only were they free, but everybody in the prison was free. And the jailer got converted to the Lord. Amen. Amen, because Judah went out before them. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Not the physical man, but what that name means. Amen. Amen. To throw out the hands to the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Praise God. You see, people don't realize the importance of worship too often. Amen. Psalms 141 and verse 2. This is the way God used, amen, our lifting up of our hands. Amen. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense. Prayers like incense. You know, the smoke of the incense would go. Amen. It was it was the, the altar of incense was right before the holiest of all. Why was it placed before the holiest of all? Because spiritually speaking, that's it's a place too, amen. Incense, prayer, amen. amen. Praise God. It represents prayer and praise. Amen. Praise God. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the e evening sacrifice. Amen. It's not a bullock or a lamb we're offering, but we're offering a sacrifice that God is well pleased with when we are worshiping him. Amen? Amen. It's right before the holiest of all. Entering in. Praise God. Oh, now, I don't know. I didn't dig this out. You can dig it out for yourself. I don't remember. I didn't have time. I may have already known it at one time in my life, but I found out when I get older, I forget more than I remember. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know if Paul wrote 1 Timothy 2 and 8 before Acts 16 and 25 or after. Maybe one of you Bible scholars can tell me. I didn't take the time to dig it out. <laughs> Amen. But he instructed. Stop, stop and think about it. Him and Paul and Silas is in the jail, and they, they lifted up their voices to the Lord and worshiped him. And then in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8, he tells, he instructs Timothy, he says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath, and without doubting, praise God. If it was before uh, the Philippian jailer thing that you know, we read about in Acts 16, and, you know, he had pre-knowledge of what it needed to be done in this hour of darkness for them. Amen. But if it happened afterwards, he was living proof it works. It works. Amen. If you find yourself in a struggle, in a battle that you cannot take care of, and you can't do anything about, amen, and you need God to, to intervene and step in, amen, praise God, don't forget to worship him, amen, praise amen. God, amen, somebody say praise the Lord, praise, praise the Lord. Lord, amen, thank you Lord, amen, I'm watching the clock, because I don't want to move before beyond. Amen. You see, we go through things. The land of promise, it is a place where there are battles, folks. Yes. You understand me? It is a place. Amen. Whenever Israel went across, they conquered Jericho first. Joshua being their leader. They conquered Jericho. The walls fell down. We know the story. Amen. They, that looked so easy, didn't it? 
They followed the instructions of Joshua. They, and Joshua got his instructions from the Lord. Amen? Yes. After that, they went to a little bitty small place called Ai. And they didn't think they needed to take everybody. They didn't realize, you see, not everybody knew what was going on. Hidden in the camp, there was a man by the name of Achan that had taken a Babylonian storm and a wedge of gold. And uh, something, a silver or two, I think, or something like that. And he hid it. And it shut the whole program down. A few people went down to for AI and got chased away like school kids. Amen. Joshua hit his knees, you know, asking God, what's going on? And God said, you, you know, you got to get the sin out of the camp. They ended up finding Achan. And found out he confessed to it and they stoned him to death. They had to get the disobedient rebellion out. You see, living for Jesus is not a license to sin and to live a sinful life. He's our leader. And we need to stay consecrated and dedicated. They got this problem taken care of and they went and whipped the guy. Amen. The Lord was once again with them. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And so sometimes we, you know, face things, and we need to keep ourselves pure. That's what the Bible says. Jesus cleansed us, but we are not to return like a dog to the vomit. Amen? Or like a sow to the wallowing. Amen? Praise God. But if we're going to live in the promised land and, and win the victories, we need to learn to be worshipers. Amen? Come on, be worshipers. You'd be surprised how many battles will be won without you even having to lift a finger other than to lift a hand to the Lord in praise and worship. Amen. When you come to church or when you're at home, we need to praise and worship them. Amen. We, and we don't need to be quiet necessarily about it. There are quiet times. Sometimes there are. But I'm here to tell you, that's not the majority of times. Amen. Praise God. We should be exuberant in our worship and lifted him up. He does not want you to be defeated. He didn't bring you into the promised land to become servants to the heathen. Amen. And when we're talking about the heathen today, we're talking about the unclean spirits of this generation, this world. Amen. He doesn't want nothing conquering your life, but he wants you conquering it. Amen. Paul instructed Thessalonians. I'm going to have to cut through some of this real quickly. Amen. He gave instructions. He said in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, Rejoice evermore. <clears throat> you know that's an instruction to the church? Rejoice. That's kind of like celebrating. Amen. Pray without ceasing. Have a faithful prayer life, right? Amen. Amen. In everything. In everything. He didn't say for everything. I said he didn't say for everything. He said in everything. Regardless of what comes or goes. Wherever you're at. In your life. Whatever you're experiencing. Everything. Give thanks. Amen. Be thankful to God. Don't lose your thanks. Your offer of thanks. Amen. To the Lord. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. When we're fearful, when we're down and out, we're fearful, we're afraid. Amen. Instead of praising God, we're, we're biting our fingernails. <coughs> we're quenching the spirit. And it says quench not. The word quench means to extinguish. Don't extinguish the spirit in your life. Amen. Despise not the prophecy. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil in the very God of peace. And sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless into the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. You hear what I'm saying? Did I make sense to you this morning? Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. Who's going to go out first, Lord? And then let you to go. 
I want Judah going. And all the 12 tribes of Israel, I want Judah leading the way. Right? Amen. Praise God. Amen. He can take Simeon with him because Simeon's going to be with him. If we go to the Lord and worship him, stay consecrated to him, we can count on our prayers being answered. Amen. Praise God. Get you a drink if you want to get you a drink.